okay our normal chest x-rays in front of us and I want you to pay attention to cardiac size area just below the aorta pulmonary window on the left side and also on the size of the main and central pulmonary arteries the term central pulmonary arteries refers to right and left pulmonary arteries and their immediate branches let's look at another chest x-ray the x-ray clearly shows cardiomegaly main and central pulmonary arteries on both sides are dilated especially the bulge on the left side is clearly very convincing you'll also agree that the visible vessels in perihilar region do not seem to be dilated and I don't know if you can see the tracheal bifurcation the angle of kyana is clearly more than 70 degrees most probably indicating enlarged left atrium more than anything else in this case enlarged subcranial lymph nodes and any mass just below the carina can also increase this angle the x-ray is of a child as you can see the epiphysis here it's not fused epiphysis here they're not fused there are also signs of anomalous venous return but let's not go there the thoracic spine is slightly bent towards the right side which I'm convinced is not positional and is known as scoliosis now we can be very happy to find a few abnormalities and say that heart and pulmonary arteries are enlarged and go home but let's do some overtime and give some meaning to our findings the x-ray shows all the features of a condition known as pulmonary arterial hypertension in fact there are only two radiological features that should convince you to diagnose pulmonary arterial hypertension on a chest x-ray one is dilated central pulmonary arteries that quickly taper as they go into lung parenchyma and right ventricular hypertrophy which in turn can increase the size of the right atrium to see right ventricular hypertrophy clearly you'll need to have a lateral view which we unfortunately do not have for this patient it shows up as enlargement of anterior superior cardiac margin on a lateral view this particular patient has a congenital uh, defect circulation of blood can be divided into two distinct systems systemic circulation which is the circulation of blood that supplies oxygenated blood from left side of the heart to the rest of the body left atrium receives this oxygenated blood from lungs this blood then goes to left ventricle and then to the rest of the body through aorta and its branches it has its own pressure which can be easily measured in medical practices by nurses or doctors so whenever you go to a medical practice they measure your blood pressure it's the uh, pressure that we just mentioned the second type of circulation circulation is known as pulmonary circulation which is the flow of blood from right side of the heart to lungs for gas exchange through pulmonary arteries this blood is then returned to left atrium with the help of pulmonary veins it has its own blood pressure which should normally be significantly lower than systemic blood pressure when pressure in pulmonary arteries becomes elevated the condition is known as pulmonary arterial hypertension pulmonary arterial hypertension is defined as elevated mean pulmonary artery pressure greater than 25 millimeter of mercury at rest pulmonary arterial hypertension is traditionally divided into primary and secondary types primary pulmonary hypertension is idiopathic means of unknown origin second pulmonary artery arterial hypertension may be secondary to a number of conditions such as interstitial, interstitial lung disease copd congenital heart disease pulmonary embolism portal hypertension bronchiectasis collagen vascular disorder sarcoidosis tuberculosis honeycombing hiv and the list can go on the topic itself is too broad to discuss in this very short time of five to ten minutes the discussion however should give you a basic understanding though 
The prognosis may be poor for a number of patients and management includes anticoagulants, calcium channel blockers, nitric oxide inhalation, and many drugs including Viagra which causes pulmonary arteries to open. L-arginine and citrulline are the area of research nowadays to help with the condition with some articles claim, claiming promising results. The best diagnostic modality is CT scan that can clearly show the caliber of pulmonary arteries. It can also help finding associated conditions in secondary pulmonary arterial hypertension. Let's see another chest x-ray of a patient suffering from pulmonary arterial hypertension and then CT scans of the same patient. Uh, chest x-ray of uh, another patient suffering from pulmonary arterial hypertension. You can see cardiomegaly. You can see main pulmonary artery is huge and you can see inter uh, lower branch of pulmonary artery behind this big shadow which is posterior to main pulmonary artery. You can also see especially in case of right pulmonary artery it is sharply tapering as it enters into the lung parenchyma. This is the upper lower branch of right pulmonary artery and same is here. You can see a cone shaped structure which is sharply tapering down the shadow is not very clear because of similar density on top of it but I'm pretty sure you can see uh, this conical shape structure which is interlobar branch of left pulmonary artery. CT scan of the same patient the anatomy is distorted this is arch of aorta this is main pulmonary artery this is left pulmonary artery and as we go down towards the feet you can see huge uh, pulmonary artery the diameter or the size of the main pulmonary artery should not be much bigger than ascending aorta this is ascending aorta and this is descending aorta we'll go further down this is right pulmonary artery ascending aorta descending aorta this is left pulmonary artery thank you very much